This is a book. Like people and animals, books have spines, and just like your spine, a book's spine serves as a support. The front and back covers are the main line of defense for the pages inside. They are also referred to as boards or panels. Where the cover board and spine meet are called the joint or the hinge. The joint can be seen on the outside and the hinge is on the inside. Sometimes the cover and spine are covered with a dust jacket. This is to prevent the covers and spine from getting worn down with bibliophilic love. Books also have a head and a tail. The head is the top of the book and the tail is the bottom of the book. And no, this tail is not fluffy like a fox's. Opposite the spine is the fore edge. The fore edge is where you can see the trim side of the pages. But, now that the exterior has been thoroughly covered and explored, we can discover what makes up a book's guts. Moving on. When you open the front cover of a book, what you see on the inside of the cover is the paste down and the end sheet. They can also be called fly leaves. These sheets occur before and after the text of a book. The following the end sheets, you have the half title page. And after this, you have a page of other books written by the author and then the title page. The title page will have the title of the book as well as the author or authors and publisher. The other side of this page will have copyright notice and other important information about the book. After this, there's sometimes an acknowledgments page, dedications page, or table of contents, and then you get to your main text block. The text block is made up of a series of signatures, which is made up of larger sheets of paper called folios that are folded in half to make pages or leaves. Many signatures are folded, trimmed down to size, and then sewn or glued together to make the finished text block. And that, my friends, is the basic anatomy of this marvelous object called a book.